Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Reboot Your Business Through Your Business Development Plan from Griffith College, Dublin, Cork and Limerick, and in association with Chambers Ireland. Welcome to all the businesses who are joining us today, those who are members of Chambers Ireland and other small businesses throughout the country. We really appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you so much for all of your feedback, support, questions and answers throughout the series. Please keep it coming. We really appreciate it. During today's session, um, we're going to be joined by a fantastic um, group of speakers, and we do invite your Q&A throughout. Please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask your questions, and we'll read them out closer to the end of the session. We do invite you to engage on social media using the hashtag Reboot2020. Do follow the Griffith channels and share your stories. We love to see them. Um, I want to also let you know that you might have seen an email coming through in the last few days. We do have an additional session on Friday morning at 10 a.m. and that's a banking session. So we look forward to welcoming you there for that. Please do see the website for all the resources, which will be shared also after this session, shortly after this session on our website. And that includes the workbook, which you might have seen, which you can download and use as a practical resource throughout this series. So I'd like to hand over now to my colleague, Anthony Brosnan in Griffith College, Limerick, to bring you through today's session. You're very welcome and enjoy. Thanks, Michael. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good day today. My name is Anthony Brosnan. As Michael said, I'm based in Griffith College, Limerick campus. I'm usually behind the camera answering the questions, but today I'll be introducing our great panel of speakers for topic six. Who do I need to work with to deliver my plan? As we are just past the halfway point, it's a great time to focus on the people you can work with to begin implementing your business plan. Our panel will look at how unexpected change can impact people in different ways and the practical tools to support you and your employees as you negotiate this challenge and potentially identify opportunities within this challenge. I'd like to remind you of the mentoring and certification opportunities that are available to you with the support of Chambers Ireland and Skillnet Ireland. Further details are available on our website and also by emailing chambers at griffith.ie. I'd like to introduce you to today's speakers, Michael Mulligan and Chris and Mary Mitchell from Green Angel. Michael is a qualified coach with an MA in positive psychology and coaching from University College of Cork. He's a lecturer with the Graduate Business School in Griffith College Cork in leadership management development. He is a founder of Go and Better, which develops high performance and leadership capability through 1% continuous improvements. And he also provides leadership coaching to emerging and established leaders across various industries. Green Angel is a natural skincare brand which was founded in 2006 by Chris and Mary Mitchell. Chris grew up harvesting seaweed and Mary had a passion for essential oils with the vision to create a product that suited her sensitive skin. Despite starting their business in a recession, they've gone from strength to strength with both a strong in-store and online presence. They recently converted their production facility to produce hand sanitizer to meet the market needs as a result of COVID-19, showing that with an extensive market awareness and adaptability, an economic crisis can present global opportunities. Please keep your questions coming through the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen and have your workbooks at the ready. Over to you, Michael, Mary and Chris. Morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Anthony and Michael for the introduction and welcome along to Chris and Mary. Um, so I'm here this morning to facilitate this session, this Q&A with Chris and Mary, and it's going to be very much interactive. We've mm -hmm. approximately about 60 minutes or so uh, to go through those questions and answers with them. Also, feel free to uh, pop your questions uh, into the chat box, and there'll be a live Q&A then following this um, conversation. I myself then will introduce a couple of concepts around uh, change and also uh, ways of, of dealing and managing that. And also Chris and Mary are going to give five top tips as we close out the session. So you're very welcome, Mary and Chris. Thanks very much for coming along uh, this for morning. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Not at all. So Chris and Mary, just to get things going, am I correct in saying that uh, Green Angel started on your kitchen table? Yeah. That is correct. It's yeah, here in front yeah. of us now. Mm -hmm. We saw yeah. that at the market and uh, we just thought we'd uh, experiment. Chris had a, an interest in the seaweed. He grew up with it. Um, and uh, I grew up with mixing essential oils into uh, shop bought uh, creams because I could never find a skincare product that suited my dry skin. So we started mixing and matching on the kitchen table. And uh, we got, um, when we decided what we wanted, we got a, a help from an expert chemist 
Okay. And uh, then we decided we'd do some retail exhibitions around the country and, and uh, test it out, which was a great kind of market research for us. And uh, we had one-to-one -one interactions with the customers and uh, they were telling us what they wanted and we tweaked it as we went along. And uh, we came up then with our Green Angel brand. Okay, very so good. We went, we went from there, I suppose we just had a little white tub Yes. Uh, this was um, around 2007, I think it was, when the, um, the downturn was in Ireland. And uh, we um, approached the pharmacies, but we needed uh, packaging. So it was our first, I suppose, our first obstacle. Yeah. Well, it was the first time we actually uh, had some interaction with um, the South Dublin um, County Enterprise Board, or uh, LEO, uh, I think. Um, okay. It's more now. So that was kind of we got our first taste of mentorship at that stage okay very good very good and what did you what did you get from that mentorship then chris well i, I suppose first of all they they um they came to us and said uh, started looking whether the whole thing was viable mm. because in our own heads we, we knew it was but we had to go through that little hurdle i suppose and if anything it was it was slightly frustrating because uh, they don't go as quickly as, as we do. But anyway, we did that. And they approved us then for, for some serious mentoring. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very good, you know. Um, they helped us with our packaging because we only had the little white tubs, you know, and yeah. uh, I suppose the pharmacists wanted to know, you know, where was your PR and marketing as well? And we didn't have that. And we went to the PR agency and they said, well, where's your distribution? So we were kind of stuck in the middle there. So. We kind of went back to the drawing board. That's when we got the help from uh, the enterprise board and they uh, helped us get our packaging together. And then we went back and we approached the pharmacies again. And that's when, you know, the, the, there was a campaign on at the time to buy Irish because of the downturn. So okay. because we were a home brand, we got a lot of support then and we got into the pharmacies and we kind of grew it from that. Yeah, but there, there, was, there was a slight hiccup that we, we thought, right, we went to distributors because We've been advised that that was the way to go and it probably is at this stage but the time the distributors you know we said right we've got pr and marketing and we've got a beautiful brand and what have you and they said fantastic um but what you know um your marketing budget is is perhaps i don't know 10 or 20 grand we've got brands here from italy and uh, uh, abroad which have kind of one million um spends you know so that's when we, we actually decided you know we're going to put our own representatives on the road okay which, which had its own um uh, kind of uh, challenges as well do you know yeah. very yeah. good so uh, so the, the business has gone from strength to strength so how many people do you currently employ we have uh, 20 people now in all including part-time staff um, we distribute into about 700 retail outlets um, nationwide, and Excellent. then we export to the UK, to um, Germany, yes, Portugal, yeah. and uh, the Czech Republic. And then we just before Christmas there, we got a distributor in the US. Okay, excellent. Very good. So there's obviously people is a central topic of this um, this conversation and, and how we can um, manage to, to work with each other and get other supports and collaborators with us. I, I'm curious as well, if if a stranger stopped you on the street in January and told you that in eight to 10 weeks time, you'd be producing uh, hand sanitizer, what would you have told them? I, I think we'd have said it was unlikely um, because we, we hadn't even considered it and uh, I, I suppose at the time also um, in January, February, um, the COVID-19 was something which was happening over in China mm. and yes. a tiny bit in, in um, Italy at the time and you know we didn't think it was going to reach our doors and it was going to be more like the, um, the what was it, the, the SARS, uh, we, we didn't think it was going to reach out. Um, okay. Uh, so what, what led you then to, to make that pivot? So, so when did it become a reality for you guys? And when did you decide we, to... We had a various uh, trade exhibitions uh, organized for abroad, particularly the one, uh, I think it was in March, uh, yeah, in, in Bologna, Bologna, in Italy. In Italy. Okay. And uh, that was, it wasn't cancelled, it was postponed until June. So we thought, well, it's not going to really last that long, you know, so we were all back on track in June anyway. 
Yeah. But uh, there, uh, lots of them around in Ireland as well were, were, were beginning to cancel them. Uh, so once we saw they, were, they weren't postponing anymore, they were cancelling, uh, it was getting a little bit more serious for us. Right. Um, so I think we, we decided, uh, <clears throat> we were chatting in work one day and it came up that we could actually do a sanitizer. We, we were hearing now that, you know, people were looking for it and... Uh, Somebody came up in, in work one day and uh, we thought, well, yeah, maybe we yeah. should go that direction. So we started yeah. looking at it again. Yeah. yeah. So, so the conversation came up at work, an idea came true. What was the sequence of events then for the people you contacted? Was it straight to suppliers? Was it an in-house solution? Um, what, what was the well, sequence there? I mean, it was, it was very challenging because at the time we were just explaining there that we, we were cancelling exhibitions and... Yeah. In the, the Italian one, we we had to rebook everything, you know, so we were quite busy. Um, so, right. we, but anyway, we we um, the first first people we had to contact were the Agricultural Board, Department of Agriculture, uh, for for a license, and of course they were uninundated with other companies trying to do this. I think they license something like four hundred companies. Right. And normally they do ten a year or a, a very small amount anyway. So that that was one challenge. So we have a, a compliance and procurement um, section to our business. So they, they were very busy doing that. Yeah. And um, we were then um, we realized that we needed a, a bigger mixer. So we had to contact um, a, a UK company in regard to getting a mixer, um, okay. which we paid for straight away, because they said we could live, deliver within two days, it actually took three weeks for it to arrive to us. Okay, right. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, then, of course, we we need to explain to the staff um, that you know this is what we were going to do. Yeah, um, we were going to try and keep them in, in jobs, and I think Mary agreed that there were. You know, we had a. I remember the meeting in the canteen, and we just said, "Look, we're going to be front line. We're going to be doing a very good job. We're going to be supplying something we'll, everybody will need." Um, and I, I, everybody bought into it. Plus, um, we were going to try and keep everybody in jobs. Yes. And has that been successful to date then? Um, yeah, we've had to let, not let go. Uh, um, what's uh, right? Furlough. Furlough. Uh, we have a sales lady in the UK. Okay. And we've had to redeploy um, some of our staff as well. Okay. Tell, and me, was tell me a bit more about that. How, how did you redeploy yeah. people? Sales yeah. reps. Uh, both our sales reps there on the factory floor at the moment and um, they, they spend maybe an hour or so in the office uh, on just site, phoning yeah. phoning yeah. up our regular people who are still some of them are still working uh, just to yeah. keep in touch and um, of course then we have the sanitizers which we're selling as well they're keeping in touch with various people on that yeah. but the rest of the time they're down uh, on the factory floor uh, helping to, to to bottle and mix the stuff you know for us so yeah um they're all we have a very good loyal staff and uh, they've been with us all a long time and mm. um, a lot of them are since the beginning of when we started so we're yeah. like just a big family so we all, we all do muck in together when we need to be yeah um, to, to be fair on on when we interview um I, I, this is probably going off slightly off track but we're um, the interview process is, is very, very important for us. Um, okay. We have the scientific kind of um, way of, of doing things, you know, so we, we say, what do we want the person, uh, what work do we want them to have done, what, what kind of, uh, um, you know, um, educational background do, they want, uh, do we want them to have. So we have a tick chart then and we, we kind of mark out of 10 but yes. at the end of it all, then, the, the big important thing is personality. Will they fit in with our business? Will they okay. work with us as a family? And I, I think, um, you know, that, that's been probably one of the ethos of um, our business is to really, really get that right fit. And, and um, we, we could spend three or four months trying to find the right person. Right. So anyway, that's uh, but, I, 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 as a small business Mm. I think employing, um, getting people to work with you and letting go of the reins and the control um, is really, really difficult. Yeah. Very good. Well, yeah. And, 
and, and because you're such a tight knit company and a, that kind of family ethos is there, you're obviously very close to them. How how have you how have you seen them deal with this change? Like it, it's it's a different experience for everybody. So what has your insights or observations been? Um, I think we're we're all working well together. Um, we are, we're all going through the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, we, we're all supporting each other. Yes, yes. and uh, I think we're all happy to be working and uh, that they're not uh, at home all the time. You know, we've been hearing all the stories of people, you know, going mad, staying at home, and they often say during the day, "Oh, thank God, we have, we can come out to work at least." You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, there was a, there was a comment uh, the other day from one of the ladies. Um, uh, we, we have a cleaner comes in once a week. Um, however, um, one of the things we said, look, guys, you, you, you're going to have to do some cleaning. You're going to have to clean all the surfaces down, floors and that on an hourly, two hourly basis. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we have the social distancing and all the challenges. Um, so they said no problem. And um, might have been, a, uh, if it was in normal circumstances, that I, this might have been. A challenge but they said no and I remember there the other day one of the ladies she says she's here I am cleaning at work she says I've only just finished it home she says big difference so she said I'm getting paid for it here so yeah that's good so, uh, very good it was good it, she she was happy enough doing it you know mm. yeah, and uh, guys do it as well you know? <laughs> I, I might bring in uh, a, a couple of slides here just to kind of capture what, what you've just spoken about and also to give the viewers something to to look at here as well so as we we're saying that this is all around people and the focus of it so this after starting at the wrong end so here we go this is the as you say central focus here is on people and how and who do i need to work with to deliver the plan just as a as a recap and this has been touched on in previous webinars so i'm not going to spend too much time here but it's just worthwhile recapping on the kubler ross change curve purely because it's it's a shared human experience. And, and Mary, you just mentioned a, a few moments ago, we're all going through this. Uh, and Kubler-Ross's research showed that as humans, we go through this curve in our own time and in our own way, but we all go through it. So nobody's alone in this uh, in this challenge. But what's, what's kind of interesting here is just the three stages. Uh, stage one, the ending, stage two, the transition, and then stage three is the new beginning, which is across the top there. And ultimately that stage one, that ending came sometime in March, around March 12th when that announcement was made. And each and every one of us uh, has gone through this in some form, whether it's a it's a, a strong shock or there's some form of denial. There's no judgment in this. This is just part and parcel of, of the experience of unexpected changes and its impact on us. The transition period is probably the last eight weeks or so in, in, in lockdown. And some days we're ahead of ourselves and things are good. And some days we're, we're kind of offbeat and that's okay. Where we're looking at and focusing on in today's webinar is that experimental stage, uh, that decision-making stage and that engaging in, in the actual the plan and putting that into action. Um, Chris and Mary, the, the kind of the, the phrase comes to mind, progress over perfection when it comes to experimenting and, and getting things moving. <laughs> Have you had a lot of experimentation to do in order to, to make that pivot a reality? Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, there was quite a lot of experimentation. E even, um, I mean, we make skincare products and the, the process for that takes uh, anything from six months to 12 months. Okay. Uh, this was probably why we, we, when we were told by our um, compliance area that we could make sanitizers um, uh, that that um, it could be done a lot quicker mm. um, but there was still a little bit of experimentation of you know how to mix mix the product properly um, you know obviously we have formulations and what have you but yeah. um, that was only theory so the practice uh, went from 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 paper to doing it in the lab and then from the lab to doing it in uh, 100 litre tanks to 1,000 litre tanks. Um, and yeah, that, that was challenging. And um, it was challenging for everybody concerned, you know, and uh, um, yeah, uh, there, was a, there was a few, um, how do you say, uh, small disasters, or right. would you say um, learning curves? Okay, yeah. Learning curves, the best way Spillages, of describing it. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. you might call yeah. them. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I think probably the, it's interesting what you say there. It's about kind of persisting with that change once the decision was made that you continued to iterate and change as you went along. And as opposed to trying to get it right first time, because that's not a, a possibility in truth. No. Um, Mary, I might take you up uh, on, on the idea of, of the decision making, but just before that, introducing, the, like the previous slide was around uh, people, human experience, a collective experience. The individual response to change then comes down to what Daniel Kahneman talks about as the two thinking systems. So Daniel Kahneman wrote the book, Thinking Fast and Slow. And it's been revered in so far as it gives people quite a simple concept around that fast and slow thinking. So ultimately, he just called it system one and system two. And system one is fast and system two is slow. And if we were to refer back to that previous slide uh, on the change curve, that change curve happens quickly. Our response to it is very fast. It's on an unconscious level because we're not quite sure what's going on. Uh, it, it's an unexpected change. It couldn't have been seen. Whereas the system too is trying to engage in the conscious mind. So the conscious mind then is to try and interrupt that, that thinking process, which can be uh, going around in a spiral and thinking to myself, what is it that I can do now? And so Chris and, and Mary, um, you've both uh, experimented. You've made decisions and you've engaged in a pivot. So just to close this out before I ask Mary the, the question on, on how you make decisions, the system one is automated and system two in the conscious mind is deliberate. That's to stop and slow down, to get pen and paper, to write out the plan and to see, okay, am I testing my assumptions here? System one is, is basically an instinctive approach. And uh, what Kahneman said was it's the gut instinct when it comes to decisions, whether system two is it voluntary. And it's not that one is better than the other. He was just encouraging people to test, uh, test your assumptions. Uh, he found that 75% of the time people used gut instinct uh, and it wasn't necessarily tested sufficiently for it to be a robust way of making a decision. So Mary, when it comes to making decisions then, how, how do you guys uh, go about doing that? Um, I think initially we would, we would go on our gut feeling. Right. First, definitely. Uh, if it feels right, um, yeah. then I, we think, oh, that's a good idea. We, if we want to do it, you know, you might, you might have a good feeling and think, oh, that's, that's a great way of making money, but you're not really comfortable with it. Um, you don't really like the job too much, but you know, you can make a lot of money from it. And then that's not a gut instinct, really. It's, you've got to feel good, we think. This is how we work. We, if we feel good about it, it's a good gut instinct. And uh, then we will go and make a plan and think about it and, and, and suss it out if you like. But, yeah. um, you know, just if it's a, if it's just a money-making project for us and it's it's nothing else, then it, it it's not going to work. It's got to feel good, right? Yeah. Us. and I think that's the only way uh, you can really have a business, as far as we're concerned, that you're working because you like it, not because it's just there's money at the end of the week um, or the month. Um, you, you start with your gut instinct, but then you know you you have to. Um, you know, work out the plan after that and make sure that that's going to work for you. Very good. Very good. So, yeah, so you, you start with the system one, the gut instinct, and yeah. then system two, you back it up with the plan. Uh, just as out of curiosity, did you guys sit down and map out this this plan for the pivot, or did you? Yeah. I think we were lucky in one sense. We put the feelers out very quickly, and we had the potential of a very large order, and that kind of really pushed it forward very quickly. Okay, very good. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get that feeder in terms of uh, the, the demand? Pardon? How, how did you figure out that there was demand? Did you go to a, a supplier or a client or? Uh, we, we just heard that everybody was looking for a shop. Right. Before they closed the shop, uh, they were starting to talk, you know, people were using it. We need to, it was on the television, every hand's turn, wash your hands, clean your hands. Um, yeah. People were looking for sanitizer, where can we get it? Yeah. Um, there was a demand for it. I, I, I think the other thing is with, with the sanitizer, I don't think it's something we normally, obviously we normally wouldn't have done, but even if we considered it before, I don't, I don't think we'd have gone for it because, okay. yeah, but, but because there was a feel good factor about it, I think that, that pushed us as well. It, okay. it was important. We, we, you know, even when we were talking to the staff, it was, guys, we're going to be doing a good thing here. 
do you know, because it wouldn't really fit in with um, the remit that, you know, the Green Angel one, because it, you know, we're, we're more natural and what have you, if that makes sense. Yeah, makes yeah. lots of sense. Very good. All our, all our products <clears throat> normally in the Green Angel range are pure and organic. This, this, we have no seaweed or essential oils or anything in the hand sanitizer. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we will be putting seaweed in it later. <laughs> at a later point. <laughs> Um, but but that's a long term thing, you know. It's more it was, a, it, was uh, it had a lot of different good things about it because first of all, it can keep our doors open. It can keep us all in jobs. It's doing a good job. We're helping people as well, and yeah. you know we're, we're also you know able to keep the, the ball rolling when we'll be taking in you know money at the end of the, the month. So yeah, um, it, it had all all the good good things about it. You know, all good factors. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, great. Just want to introduce one final concept uh, around, you know, taking action, and we're going to address then the the kind of the key central topic around people here, and it's the one percent idea. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this. It's kind of what I work around, and it's the idea of one percent is 15 minutes of your day, and that can be used to uh, any kind of way to help you get moving. We're going to look at the, a few different pieces here now in a second, but it's kind of asking yourself, what is, what, what's a 15 minute action that would help me today and, and every day? And it could be 15 minutes planning first thing in the morning to say, well, if I get these one, two or three things done, great. And that could be a phone call. That could be writing out a section of your business plan. could be speaking to a supplier or a customer. But ultimately, it's just to give you a sense of, of um, uh, achievement, a sense of momentum. And that over time, particularly as the, lockdown is is gradually um, phased out, that there's, I suppose, some momentum started before that happens. So the central t topic today is people. And starting with you, the person, we're going to look at the idea of business partner, business partner. So Chris and Mary, you, you perfectly fit that profile. Then there's the, the stakeholders involved, some employees, suppliers, accountant and other supports. And that might be other consultants uh, who you can swap services with um, and customers and thinking of, of all the people that are involved uh, with the business. So starting with you. So uh, this has been touched on before, so we're not necessarily gonna drill into it, but it's what can I do myself? And even part of that plan is to separate out what I can and what I can't do. And what areas do I need support in? Uh, Chris, at the outset, you mentioned, you, you've sought uh, mentoring and other supports in the past. Um, have you have you done so on a consistent basis with uh, coaches, mentors, consultants, and, and yeah. that's actually directed to both of you? Yeah, we um, <clears throat> we continue with the Leo, um, and then uh, Mary and I also did Plato, which was a kind of a, a management course, and they've done various courses. So we we. Um, there was two aspects to that. One was you, you'd get um, uh, lots of help, and uh, you'd have projects to do, and so forth. And you, you'd be when you were doing it, you'd be thinking, "No, oh, I've got my own business to do, and I'm, I'm, I've got these projects." But they'd all be interlinked. Yeah. But I think um, what one of the things from it was the networking. Um, you know, we've still lots of contacts from there, or you know, we can ring them up, and they've got contacts, and and that that's great. Um, we, when we started, we were, there was less than obviously 10 people working for us. So we came under Leo. Um, but then as uh, we came, um, uh, our turnover increased and the amount of people working for us increased. We then uh, came under um, Enterprise Island and the focus was more on export and, okay. and so forth. So, and we got a lot of mentorship there. Um, uh, also groups, uh, we join um, some groups, one was the Irish Cosmetics Association, they actually run, we, we're members of that group, um, and they actually run an exhibition, mm -hmm. 600 people visit the exhibition, and the 600 people would be from uh, pharmacy buyers, you know, so that, that's okay. a group to be in, but that, that is actually a group, we go out to dinner, we have meetings, and so forth, and um, yeah. Uh, Chamber yeah. of Commerce Chamber, is fantastic sorry. as well. We are the member of the Chamber of Commerce uh, right at the beginning. Mm. It's brilliant for networking, great support. Um, yeah. I think it's a great one to join up. Um, 
you've got people, you know, of the same caliber, people starting off business, people with small, a few staff and that. Great, great to be able to chat to. And again, you meet up, it's not just going, going to chamber and having a meeting, you, you can meet up with them socially and everything. It's great, it's great to meet. I, I, think, I think one of the things it kind of um, might be digressing, but um, it's all about um, yourself. I mean, Mary and our, I bounce off each other. If you're running your own business, just yes. yourself, yeah. Um, I think it's important that you have a network of like-minded um, people. Uh, a few years ago, um, about five of us from all, all from different areas of business used to rent a hotel room um, okay. once a month, and we used to tear into each other. And um, no, that's that's wrong. We used to set each other goals, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we put lines in the sand for each other and you had to have them done by the time you got to the meeting okay. you know, the, the following month and, and um, the, the, I mean they were friends but um, you know they say come on you, you said you get that done you needed to get that done it was important for your business mm -hmm. but at the same time they were a, a kind of a, a shoulder to cry on as well and I think yeah. Um, for your own well-being, it's really, really important that you can pick the phone up, not necessarily friends, but, but people who are thinking the same as you. you know? Yes, yeah, yeah. Important to have that, um, that support system available uh, at That's a given really time. Important. So just some, uh, and I should mention as well to uh, viewers and listeners, all these slides will be available afterwards. Um, so just uh, not to worry in case you're, you're, you're wondering, will you miss out on anything? So Chambers, Ireland and Skillnet Ireland, uh, there's a, a mentoring support as well, which I'll mention afterwards, and it's on the last slide. Um, uh, Chris and Mary, you've mentioned the uh, local enterprise office, uh, Enterprise Ireland, uh, ISME, and other networks, and they're formal and informal. And as you say, it could be a case of like-minded people, or it could even be considering the situation. Is it a Zoom call uh, once a week, or is it a 15-minute call uh, once a day just to say, well, look, by the end of today, I'm going to do this, and that you mm -hmm. swap what it is you're going to say or do. Moving across then um, to, yes, go ahead, Chris. No, I was just going to say uh, the Small Businesses uh, Association, we're in that, um, and, and they've been very helpful. Um, one thing I would say is um, put yourself in for awards. Okay, very put good. Put yourself in for awards because, uh, again, you have to sit down and you have to set out, you know, if you want to go in for a award, you have to shout about yourself and you have to you know say what you've done and what you're going to do and it kind of focuses you a little bit and you also again if, if um i mean we actually were um we we won uh what, I mean, what, what did we get there? Several, yeah no but they, they, just more, more, more recently business person of the year oh award, brilliant and, and, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's good, good for the business, it's good for your own morale. Yeah, and, you sorry. Know, it's, it's great PR as well as everything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As you say, it feeds yourself and it feeds your business. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to just look briefly at, at uh, people with business partners and people without. So the first question then is, how can you get the best out of your business partner? How do you, you know, collaborate and make that effective for the business? How do we get the best out of each other then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for, for people who, out there who've got business partners. Uh, well, as a as a um, a couple, I think we tend to try and work on different different things um, okay. as opposed to trying to work we, on the same we thing. We don't really work together as such. We're in the same business. We have our own job. We overlap a little bit, but not too much. Um, okay. I'm not sure how we would get on 24 seven seven days a week together. Yeah. But, um, sure. So we set the boundaries, I suppose, in the criteria. Yeah. You know what? You you do this, you do that. You know, yeah. I, I'd be more involved in the manufacturing side of things. Mary would be more involved in the PR, the marketing, the finances. And um, although we we completely yeah. cross over, I suppose. Yeah, of course. But um, I think um, we're lucky in the fact that we're <laughs> never kind of down on the same day. You know, if, if one of us is having a down day, the other one is up, so we can pull each other up. So yeah, um, that works really well for us um, in that in that way as well. Yeah, um, you know, we we obviously we have meetings. We we try not to do it at home all the time, but unfortunately, it does come home with us. Sure. Uh, we we try not to, but we, 
we have our meetings in work with the, the rest of the management as well. So that's um, there are other times when we could pass each other at the door and not really say too much to each other for a couple of days. We're so busy. So sure, you know, it, it's up and down. It's up and down all the time. I think it's just we have a good understanding of each other. We're, we're in the same business. We understand what's going on. So we yeah. just take whatever it is and deal with it. Brilliant. That's great. We might have touched on this already, but recommendations for those who don't have a business partner. So you, you mentioned, you know, if it is a, even if, you know, if you don't have trying to get into some form of a network, what would your recommendation be then to those who don't have, have business partners to bounce off? Um, well, I suppose immediately join either ISME or the Small Business Association and also um, find, try and find some guild you know, if you're a hair, you know, if you're a hairdresser, there's a hairdressing guild, or if you're a barber, the same. Um, uh, I was looking one there, um, cake decorating. Um, do you know there's actually a big show for cake decorators and what have you? So mm -hmm. definitely network. Networking is is so important. You know, brilliant. Um, yeah, and, and go to exhibitions as well. You know, at the moment it's a little bit difficult, but. Um, you know, we, we go over to exhibitions in the UK and and also uh, further abroad, you know, uh, Germany and France and Italy. And sometimes you go into these shows and you think, oh, God, I'm so, so busy. I, I don't have time to go. Um, but I think what you need to do is go to them and think, well, look, if I get one little nugget out of this, yeah. it's fantastic. But, you know, that nugget of information or that, that connection might not come to fruition until a year or two years later but okay it needs to be done you know yeah brilliant i think sometimes um you know if you're in a bit if you're starting off a business and you're you kind of look at a, a, another business that's you know you're looking at that you'd like to achieve to get to that point hmm. um it might be worth ringing them up and just asking them a few questions then they may be willing to help you out i think a lot of people would we right. would get students a lot ringing us, you know, and asking us questions and they're doing, you know, their masters, their, their right. masters or whatever it is, and uh, they might do a project on us and that. So, like, we're always happy to give back because we got a lot of help along the way. So, you know, I think a lot of companies might be happy to do that, you know, yeah. if, if you want some help or information, you know, just give them a call. All they can say is no anyway, but it, it wouldn't be, you might be able to, you know, help you along in some way. Very good. Brilliant. Great stuff. The final question in this section here is around the planning. And just curious around your own planning. Are, are you guys planning short term uh, or long term or, or, or both? Um, I think we do both. You know, we, we have a long term plan there, a five year plan. Yeah. <clears throat> I think um, just, just to relate to smaller businesses, I, I think this planning, writing stuff down is, is probably one of the hardest disciplines to actually to, to learn. You know, um, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard this said that um, you should be spending 90% of your time actually concentrating on strategy and so forth and 10% doing the nuts and bolts. But with small businesses, it tends to be the opposite way around. 10% or less is spent, spent on strategy. And, and really, you know, we should spend a lot more time on it. Um, so uh, as we've kind of grown, I think we've, we've, we've realized that we need to be more disciplined. And yeah, we do a five-year plan, a three-year plan, and we do a, a very short-term plan. And then um, we'd also have, in this case, a firefighting plan, you know, okay. um, kind of, all right, you know, normally we, we do, We'd spend three months researching this and so forth, but guys, we don't have time. We, yeah. We've got to make decisions quickly here mm. and, and, and get on with things, you know? And, and I suppose under um, in a situation like now, you do tend to have to go more on your gut instinct and you don't follow it up with the, the, what you should do, which is, is um, qualify your gut instinct, do you know? Um, yeah. But you still need to do that. So. Even if you make the quick decisions, tr tr try and qualify them as well. You know, very good. That that firefighting plan. Then, uh, how far out in the in the distance are you looking with that? 
Well, you know, the COVID thing, I mean, it was uh, literally uh, four weeks. Four weeks. Or, you know, I mean, we, we had, I mean, there were so many different aspects to it. You know, we had the compliance and so forth. We had the equipment. We had the, um, we had the raw materials. You know, we had to, uh, our box company would, would usually give him six or eight weeks. But, you know, this is the outer yeah. boxes. We give him six or eight weeks worth of uh, lead time. And we were saying, um, could, John, could you, could you do these kind of within a week? Okay, you know? right. Um, and then the other problem then was we were ordering bottles and we were, were say, getting 250 ml bottles and they were all coming in different sizes. So we had the challenge of going to him and he had to do different dyes. And then he said, I can't get hold of my dye cutter. And, you know, it was just things which we normally took for granted and we'd have a system and yeah. we're much slower. We had to fly pumps in, you know, we could get the bottles, but we couldn't get pumps for them. So we had to fly them in from China. Right. And um, there was a raw material, for example, which we think saved us um, locally. Uh, we'd buy it for a, uh, we, we actually imported this raw material in from China and it actually cost us 10 times more than it would locally. Really? Um, but that, that was a big decision. And, mm. you know, we had product there when other companies didn't, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 part, yeah. The, the emergency planning. Yeah. So there was a lot of emergency planning and, uh, I, I think something good has come out of, of the, the COVID. I mean, here we are on Zoom, and I, I think uh, we, we could nearly arrange a, a management meeting at the drop of a hat. Yeah. You right. know, guys, ring everybody up. Listen, will you have a meeting in 15 minutes' time? Whereas before, it was, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do that in two days' time. So sure. I, I think, I, I mean, I think, uh, I was on on the phone to a friend last night who, who has a relatively big business, and he says this has really changed the way I'm going to do business in the future. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, sorry. About. Yeah, we we might drill into some of those positives in a few moments. Um, thinking of of those who with who are sole traders and those who have one employee or or two employees upwards. How do you get people to buy into the actual the pivot um, to make that change so quickly and to, to get to get traction? Um, well, as I said before, like we, we just chatted to our, our staff, our staff are, are very loyal and happy to do whatever. But yeah. um, I think um, for somebody who has a small amount of staff, it's just to talk to them like that, you know, everybody realizes the situation, you know, you know, and, and are, are they willing to help out? Do they want to keep their job? Um, yeah. You know, and, and like I said before, we're all in the one situation. So, you know, can we all just smoke in and help out, yeah. you know, and, and, and get on and keep, keep the wheels turning? Yeah, I think, I think it's important for, for you to let your staff feel that they're participating in the ideas you know, um, okay. Uh, it's really important to throw it out and say, you know, guys, um, has anybody got any ideas on this? And, um, um, you know, and, and say to them, look, uh, I suppose preempt it and say, if we don't use your ideas, it doesn't mean that we don't think they're good. Um, but we're interested in them and get engagement and yeah. make them feel they're part of the company. I think right? if you if it's a small amount of staff, it's great to have an ideas box just to you know. Oh yeah. Put, put your idea in it and and you know have a little chat about it. You know, uh, pick a time, you know, an hour on a Friday or something, and just go through the ideas and you know it it, it makes them feel important. It makes them feel included. You know, and it makes them you know. If you, if you do use one of the ideas, then they're delighted to come into work and, and, and do it. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to feel listened to. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. What about training and retraining? Have have you had any needs on that front? Yeah, I mean, we, we train and retrain. Um, I mean, there's a lot of compliance with um, with what we do. We we were inspected there recently uh, before Christmas by um, the HPRA. Okay. Um, yeah, they uh, 
they charge us two grand for the for that, you know. So um, it was fantastic. Um, yeah. And what what it did, it it uh, you know they they um, drilled down into what training we were doing and retraining and um, and and that's what we do. Yeah. So it's very very important. Okay. Brilliant. So we kind of touched on this. Maybe it, it, it may not be worthwhile uh, going into that any further uh, in terms of how do you manage employees? You've, you've touched on that. So what conversation did you have with uh, suppliers and how would you go about that? Like for some, is it to just get that conversation started? Would you say don't delay it and get stuck in or, or what's your recommendation there? Uh, with the sanitizer, do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, we we have our two sales reps who, who got on the phone straight away to our regular customers for starters. Um, but with our suppliers. Um, oh, with our suppliers, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the, I, I suppose. Um, yeah, we do have our regular suppliers. Are, are you talking more about how to engage with them initially? Exactly. Uh, yeah, if there are any changes on your front, or even if it's just to. If you have a burning question, do you, do you reckon you get it out there straight away or how do you go about that conversation? Yeah, I, I suppose you need to paint a picture for, for your supplier as to um, the, the business you're going to give them over a given period. You know, um, I mean, when we're at, at exhibitions ourselves mm. and we're trying to get new customers mm. and <coughs> for us, <laughs> it's uh, important uh, you, you know we, we are not looking for them to come and buy <clears throat> the product to sell off quickly in a little gift shop you know uh, we, yeah. we're looking for a relationship so I, I think when you're, you're approaching um, your suppliers is you know say to them we're looking for a company who, who's going to be reliable and has a good service record and actually look for, for, for testimonials, you know, okay. uh, and we, we do that all the time. Uh, we look for testimonials. Right. Um, even, I suppose this, this is going a little bit off track, but we do lots of exhibitions and shows, you know, we do retail ones and we do, um, we do trade ones. Yeah. And actually, whether you're going to exhibit at one, well, if you're going to exhibit at one, essentially you're being supplied space. So we do a lot of research on them shows and we look at the, ex uh, the, the people who went to that exhibition, um, traders who went to the exhibition the year before. Okay. And see if they're rebooking because if they're okay. not rebooking, there's a very good chance it's not a very good show. Okay, um, very good. Yeah, you know now it's a little bit more difficult when you're trying to get real supplies and so forth, um, physical supplies, I suppose. Um, but uh, I think at the moment uh, uh, there's a short supply of, you know, our ingredients that we're looking for for the sanitizers and the bottles and that. Yeah. So even our regular suppliers of bottles and that can't guarantee anything with us. Okay. Um, so like even though you might <clears throat> have a relationship with them, this this. It still can't you say, well, can't. Yeah, we're going to get you that because at the moment it's, it's quite difficult. You're just taking what you can at the time and what they can give you. Sometimes it's in short supply, other times they can give you a bulk of it. And the next time you go back, there might not be any. So it's, it's very, it's kind of a bit precarious at the moment mm. because yeah. the, not just the bottles with the ingredients themselves, the, the, yeah. the thickener for the gel and that, it's, it's very hard to get at the moment. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think one, one of the other things um, with suppliers is, is, is communication. Um, if you're struggling to pay them, yeah. communicate. Okay. You know, um, and, um, you know, if you owe uh, somebody a thousand euro and you, you simply can't pay it, pay them 50 euro. Just say, look, I, 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 really, I really, really mean to pay this and I want to okay. pay this take 50 euro and pay it yeah you know um yeah. 
it's really important. Yes. You communicate they, with they, them. they see that you're making an effort and you want to do it rather than just not, not contact them at all. Then yeah, it's... and it could be burning you up then. It's a 50 minute phone call that could solve a lot of that. Just on, on for those who don't have suppliers necessarily, tips for engaging with customers, say, let's think of uh, maybe hairdressers or somebody and, and various different similar businesses that are waiting to reopen. How can they engage customers? Um, yeah, we were saying uh, um, hairdressers. Yeah, it was a good idea to maybe give them a call to you know if you're, you know if you, you have their numbers in, in the book, just give them a call, see how they're doing. Maybe give them a few tips on how to color their hair or trim their fringe or whatever. Yeah, um, I think they'd be delighted to hear from you. Or I actually know a hairdresser who. Um, she makes loads of cupcakes and she just okay. locks them at the door of all her local um, clients. So I leave a little note with them just to let them know that she's thinking of them. Oh, very nice. Just to keep in touch, I think, with them and let them feel that they're not just forgotten about and, uh, you know, just give them any tips you possibly can to keep going so yeah. they can come back to you. It's, it's a real good PR and marketing yeah. opportunity, you know, that, that, you know, if they, uh, the lady there who's got the cupcakes, she'll start talking with her friends and they say, oh yeah, um, you know, uh, um, such and such a hairdresser, she's great, she's brilliant, she even gave me cupcakes and, yeah. and um, you know, yeah, it, word, it, spreads. It, word spreads. Word spreads, yeah. And it's, I guess it's anticipating w when the doors do open up again that you've been in, in contact, uh, your customers feel valued and that they're the first people on your mind to know, well, Chris and Mary called me while I was, while the lockdown was on. You, 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 they feel you haven't left them. You know, we often yeah. say we're, we are really busy and there's various meetings going on, our functions. And we often say, well, if you drop in just for like 15 minutes even, show your face, people will know you've been there. Yeah. Whereas yeah. You have, if you're missing and they don't see you for a second in time, they're gone out of your head, you know. So yeah. They feel that they've seen you all the time, even if it's only for five minutes or ten minutes. You've kept up that contact. Very good. Um, Very good. I, That's I clever. That. Yeah, and simple to do. Yeah. Mm. So a phone call even is as good as you know seeing them. Yeah, brilliant. Finally, and what we're we're closing in maybe on the last ten minutes or so uh, before we open up to the live Q and A. Any other tips then? So accountants, I think, um, Chris, to, to borrow your point there on speaking with suppliers, if there's certain things you, 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 you can pay at this moment in time, have the conversation. Likewise, talking to your, your accountant, uh, he or she may be able to provide valuable tips to um, you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and I guess there was a session yesterday on that, on, on finances. Just two other things that came to mind was this idea of uh, quid pro quo where you swap services with uh, if it's somebody who's in a in a similar business and it doesn't even have to be but it's that thing where you swap time um, that can be an hour for an hour or simply 15 minute chat every morning where you both outline what it is you're going to do was there any other kind of uh, ideas there that you guys would like to to share before I I press you on the, the next section, which will be the, the positives or maybe some of the opportunities that have, have arisen for you guys in this challenge. Yeah, um, a few things actually. Uh, um, we're doing sanitizer, but we, we contact all over and um, we're actually supplying face masks and um, various bits of equipment. And really that's been a little bit of swapping uh, of products as opposed to yeah, you know, okay. so we, I wouldn't say we're bartering, but we're we have sanitizer, they have it, so so there's a little bit of that going on. Um, but I, I was talking to a, a friend of mine there who runs, um, he has a kind of furniture store, and uh, he fits for um, he fits kitchens and what have you. And you know his business has hit rock bottom, but he's got lots of uh, equipment and he's lots of um, supplies there. So he's actually started doing making outdoor equipment, that outdoor okay. because he actually sees. Well, in fact, he's got orders now for um, for for uh, outdoor tables and chairs and what have you. Um, so yeah, I, I would have never thought of that, but um, 
yeah, that, that's something positive he's done, you know. Yeah. And, and again, he says, I, I'd have I never thought I'd be making outdoor furniture. So it's a, another string to his bow when, when things get back to normal, you know. Yeah. Small good. Yeah. And, and for you guys, have, have, have there been any, let's say, maybe questions that you've been asking in your plans? Is it possible to expand or export into a certain market? Has, has this challenge um, brought up anything like that in terms of an opportunity for you? Absolutely. We've discovered that we can upscale very uh, quickly now ourselves. It's, that was uh, something we've been wanting to do. Okay. Um, but this has proven to us that we can actually do it. Okay. We've actually had, um, we only ever did a nine to five, but now we had a second shift on in the last few weeks now. Um, yeah. From uh, four to half eleven, I think. So. Yeah. Um, so we can we can upscale, and that's that's very positive for us. We know we can go forward now and do that with our Green Angel brand. It, it was all theory before, you know. Okay. Yeah. We, we uh, companies, U.S. companies are saying, yeah, okay, uh, can you do you know a certain amount per week? And we're saying, yeah, well, we think we can, and we we do all the plans out on paper, and yes, 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 yes. But it, it, we, we just haven't made that move, but this has really pushed us and uh, we, we know we can do it now. I mean, we've had to rent our next door neighbours. Uh, it was an empty uh, um, warehouse. warehouse. So we okay. rented that and we realised that that's exactly what we we needed to do. You know, so it's helped us, you know, it's helped us to upscale. You know? Okay. So you, yeah. And, and how about um, online sales? Have they changed in any way or... Massively, yeah. The growth Massively. of online sales is huge now. Well, okay. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think Christmas time. How many? Uh, what how big it has yeah, we we it's... we April was bigger than December. And, right. You know, so, three times three times bigger in April yeah, than it was yeah. in December. That's what it was. Um, and and we're seeing an opportunity. So Enterprise Island um, provide a, a very good um, service to help us do this, and and we've kind of. We've skirted around it and it suddenly made us realize you know this is definitely something we should be doing and um, so we we've, we've written letters already and we we're engaging with them so yeah and it will be a lot easier because it will be zoom we won't yeah. go all the way over to east and go and see them you know, so. yeah so, so some uh, real positives for you and as you've just mentioned again and, and and earlier you were saying that you can get a management meeting at the drop of a hat whether it's before trying to get all the people in the same room yeah. so there's there's some uh, positive shifts here uh coming out of this this challenging time yeah so guys if we could uh t for for viewers and listeners for to tap into what your top tips are and then we'll open it up to a live Q and A then in the next uh, few minutes. So, Mary and Chris Mitchell, what would you say your five top tips for SMEs are? So I think the first would be to be positive and have belief in yourself. Um, I think what you are is what you attract. Um, I think uh, I think thinking outside the box is a good one. Um, I think if it can be a solution, find something that. The customer needs and find a solution to it. It's always a good one. Um, good. So that's two, three, two, two. <laughs> um, three. Uh, have a plan and commit it to paper. Mm -hmm. I think um, once you commit it to paper, it's a kind of you, you get more clarity on it. Yeah, but I, I have to stop you, Mary. Something um, you said, like, is do something positive yeah about this and you actually I always remember you had a, a small business there a few years ago and um, yeah. um, no when i started out when i did a business course a long long time ago my last life um i remember something that he said to me and he said if you want you know if you're going to go and buy get an office or a shop or any or a house or anything go out and buy something for it um and I remember I wanted this office and uh, the first thing I did, I went out and I bought a kettle and a tea set. And, oh, yeah. and I could visualize where that was sitting in my office. And that was even before I looked at the offices. But that's what I always do from now on. If I ever want something, I go and buy something for it. And that, that means that's it. I'm doing it now. Very good. 
Great. Yeah. So you're making you're making steps and progress towards it. Yeah, exactly. That's doing something positive towards it. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Um, I think to um, research a researcher opportunity, you right. know, find out a little bit more about it, and um, then uh, five. I think networking networking is very uh, important, and I don't. I think it's don't don't be afraid to go and look for help to ask for help, mm. and there's lots of opportunities out there. I think yeah. if, you, if you network it out talking about it, um, you'll you'll find your way. Brilliant. I, I think I think also though it, there is, there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of opportunities, but it, it's it's also to make sure that opportunity fits with you. You know, if, yeah. if, if you think well, I, you know, there's an opportunity that I could do that and what have you. But you, you need to think, well, do I want to be doing that in five exactly. years' time? It's really important that yeah. the opportunity is, you know, the whole thing is is find something you like doing and do it for a living. You'll, you'll never do a day's work in your life. So something yeah. like that. You know. Brilliant. Yeah, and, and as Mary was saying earlier, the, the, that gut instinct that has to feel right before to, you know, and, and as you just said, Chris, now you can identify opportunities, but do you want to be doing it? Is it, is it has to be more about more than just money yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's, money comes to you anyway if, if you're doing what you like you know because if you're doing what you like you're going to do it good so. yeah brilliant so i'm just going to outline some uh quick tips here or not tips should i say but resources uh -huh. um and the mentoring support so we'll, we'll be handing over then to the live q a uh, guys in a moment to our our audience so chambers ireland and skillnet ireland mm -hmm. um there is this has just been announced uh, earlier this week. So if you want to visit uh, griffith.ie or email chambers at griffith.ie uh, who are going to provide mentor supports to uh, SMEs out there. So that's a, a brilliant service to, uh, to tap into. Obviously, we've just mentioned a few other ones as well, local enterprise office. Uh, for those who are looking for business continuity support, there's, a, there's support there, a voucher of approximately two and a half grand um, to help you plan out uh, short and medium and long-term uh, business planning. And then there's a trading online voucher where if you wanted to use this time as an opportunity to up update your online presence, your online um, website, this this funding originally, as far as I'm aware, was a 50-50, but now it's gone as far as a 90% uh, funding from the LEO. Mm -hmm. And then there's other ones such as Enterprise Ireland uh, and the Irish uh, SME association we've also mentioned others throughout the throughout the slide deck and just as again as a reminder that slide deck will be available to everybody uh, after this particular webinar um so i think it's at this point now where we're going to invite in the the live q a so uh, mm -hmm. anthony here might take the the lead there Hey guys, yeah, uh, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to Chris and Mary for their honesty and insight into how Green Angel grew. Uh, it was great to hear how you've recently adapted um, and the importance of the support structures, uh, particularly the ideas of bouncing ideas back and forth. Um, thanks to Michael, some great points about how people deal with change and how to get buy-in from everyone involved when you're dealing with the change. Um, also highlighting the effective collaboration with business partners uh, to help with the transition towards the new beginnings. So there was lots of interesting points to consider um, for attendees who are, are looking to um, their business plan and who they need to work with for their business plan. And um, so, so thanks to everyone on the panel and um, thanks to everyone who engaged in the Q&A as well during the session. And um, I'll just open up some of the questions now. They're still coming in. So um, for anyone who wants to put in a question, please feel free. Use the Q&A button at the bottom. Um, so we'll start into the questions. Uh, so this question is from Simon from Cashels. So he said, morning all, um, and this is a question for Chris and Mary. He's interested to know how you determined your pricing structure, uh, wholesale, retail, and end user, and what were the main drivers behind that, the competitors, the price range, et cetera. Um, did you get advice from the accountants, the enterprise office, or other consultants, or did you decide based on your own research? And this question is about your main product range, not your recent transition. Yeah, I, I, I think we we do um, a lot of research, so we, we go, particularly to exhibitions, um, because then you have all the um, uh, retail exhibitions um, and shops. We, I mean, we, ha we have to do it now. We, we benchmark um, our products against our competitors. Um, and so, so that's what we, we do there. 
And then um, when it comes to your trade prices, wholesale prices, um, th th this kind of a set formula, um, it gets a little bit more tricky when you're dealing with distributors. Um, well, we're finding that anyway. There's no s set price, you know, but, but certainly selling into um, into shops, you know, the, the, well, you, I suppose gift shops and pharmacies would, would have slightly, they'd expect different margins um, and so forth. And then um, dealing with the bigger players, they're always going to look for discounts. What, what I would say, what we would say is um, make sure you give yourself enough room so, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, it, it depends how big you want your business to be. You know, if you see yourself exporting to America, then your, your selling price, your final RRP uh, needs to be substantially bigger than your manufacturing price. You know, so give yourself plenty of room. I don't know if that helpful, but I don't know how you feel now. What? But it's just um, the product, you, well, our, our skincare products, we look at where we want to place them on the shelf, basically. Originally, that's what we did. Our, our products are mid-range, so we kind of benchmark our ORPs at that price. Um, and then we, <clears throat> the, um, we kind of work it backwards then. Um, it, it is very important that you do spend a lot of time and make sure that you get this right, because it's very, very difficult to... Um, change your prices. Well, you can come down, but certainly you can't go up. So if, if you think, oh, you know, I should have been charging 10 euro or more for that product. Well, you, 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 you can't, you know, yeah. you'll find it tricky to go up. You mentioned at the start um, that you had to go back to the drawing board after discussion with a mentor regarding the, the marketing and the packaging side of things. Um, is that something that you, you would really, you know, advise people to do? In terms of bouncing ideas and, and working with people yeah absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah work, work with the mentor on it um also good designers uh, we have a very good designer um you know uh, certainly get professional it, it's worth spending the money uh on the professionals you know um we, we spend an awful lot of money on a designer when you're starting off that money seems astronomical obviously as your business gets bigger it kind of the the, the the it doesn't seem quite as much but it's really important that yeah the, i think uh, if to grow into it i think if you're starting off your business you're wearing all the hats yourself and you've got to make do what you can do with what you have and um, but i think once you can start affording the professional person to deal with that situation whatever position you want them to be in the more you can afford somebody who know has the knowledge of that area, then you know it, you will notice the difference of your business building each time. You know, you, you I think you need to accept the fact that you're starting off and you, you're doing everything yourself. You don't have to know everything, but you have to muddle your way through it and then just start building it. You know, as you're growing, get the professional people in. That's when you'll notice it really growing. Yeah, I think a lot of people who are watching today can relate to that wearing the many hats. Um, and yeah. so thanks very much for that. Um, we've got some some lovely comments in just about today from Adele. Uh, love Chris and Mary's honesty. Uh, the world we're in right now is not perfect. From trial and error, we can get to uh, where we need to go. Um, so Catherine as well, a really super session with great insights. Um, and thanks for the moderation as well, Michael. Um, question in here, just in terms of your, your pivot to the hand sanitizer. Do you have any worries about the brand um, because you've left something out, some of the, the smoothing, sorry, the soothing ingredients um, with the hand sanitizer? Well, uh, to be honest, we, we do have uh, the sanitizer we have is, is not called Green Angel, it's called Celtic. So um, we do have it, we do, have, we've just brought out a, a, green, a Angel. green Angel one, but it, we were not really, we have it up on our website, but we're not pushing that at the moment till we get the uh, seaweed, but we're working on putting the seaweed into it. But at the moment, the one that's we're, we're, that's out there is called Celtic. Super, super, so excellent. We, we, we have a, a little, a, a few, uh, let's say the Celtic would be 99% of our production and we do a 1% Green Angel because we were asked quite a lot for it. 
and we, we, we know what you're saying. Um, part of us said, mm, well, it doesn't really fit in with what we're doing, but then people wanted it and they wanted the security of having a green angel brand, you know, so. so yeah. yeah, we decided to call it something else simply because it wasn't, it didn't have the uh, natural and organic ingredients that we normally do. Yeah. Thanks for that. You know, it would have been great PR because it's out there, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I just look back to the questions there. Um, from an anonymous attendee, how do you keep your staff motivated and positive in the uncertainty of the current situation? And I think that's a question a lot of people are asking at the moment. Um, well, I, I suppose because we're, we're still working, it's easy to keep them motivated because they, 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 like, they like coming into work, as far as I know. And, you know <laughs> This, this could be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I suppose for somebody who's had to close their doors and trying to get them back to work and keep them motivated, I, I think I think you've got to be positive. You've got yeah. to, you know, make your plan, be positive, and just you know keep pushing away at it because I think I think really if you want something to work, you can make it work. Yeah. There's ways around everything. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's just finding those ways. But but I do think um, there's there's quite a lot of humour in our business, and we personally, you know, even if we're having a bad day, you know, the the it comes from the top. So you go in very grumpy or whatever, and that filters down. So you know, we go in, how things great, isn't it? You know, it's fantastic. You know, uh, harvest is hard work, but we're getting through it, aren't we? So be positive, and and we feel it filters down. And, uh, you know, a smile and a joke. Um, uh, uh, there was just a, a very funny story. One of our reps, he, he comes in on a Friday and he totally disrupts, no, he doesn't disrupt the place, but everybody's laughing and joking and everything. And we had to have a sit down with him and say, um, I won't say his name, but, uh, you know, um, when, you come, when, when you work on the production line, you just have to calm things down. You can't be telling the jokes. You can't be having the laugh and the joke. But of course, the humor's still there. And, you know, you go down and there's comments and there's a bit of fun. And I think it's important to, um, you know, be serious. But at the end of the day, life's for living, you know, and, and to have a, a, a just to try and make it fun. That's, that's it. Thanks for that. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, and just before we get into the question, I'll just read out two more comments. So from Catherine, excellent session, lots of positives. Um, thanks to everyone. Uh, Peter Smith, excellent session. Thanks to everyone again. Um, one comment there from Enda, uh, and I think it, it goes back to what you were saying there. Focus on the things we can control, the little things, rather than the news, which we have no control over. Um, so that leads into to staying positive as well. Um, so thanks for that, Enda. Um, the final question before we wrap things up is from Ryan. Um, and Ryan wants to know, before Green Angel, what business experience did Chris and Mary have and how did it help you in creating and developing Green Angel? Um, well, I'll be, I'll be two weeks um, because we've been in lots and lots of businesses. Yeah. Um, well, well, I started, I was a visual merchandiser for a long time. Um, and then I, uh, I worked for several places and then I worked for myself for a couple of years. Um, and um, I met Chris then and- At an exhibition. Yeah. We were both, yeah. we had two separate businesses. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I, I was selling uh, pens and Mary was selling Green Angel Tropical Air Plant. So we had lots of businesses. Um, vending machines in Spain. Um, uh, Your background is uh, catering so, though. Yeah, I, I trained in hotel management. So um, I suppose uh, hotel management I'd recommend it for, for anybody who doesn't know what they want to do, go and do hotel management because they train you in about 14 or 15 different disciplines and they're absolutely fantastic for running a business. So if you think of a hotel, there's so many different things going on, you know, so, um, and uh, yeah, and keep, keep, keep learning. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, Thanks very much for, for taking those questions and thanks very much to, to everyone who sent in the questions. Um, I'd just like to wrap up by saying thanks to all the panelists today um, and thanks for all the engagement on the, the Q&A um, and thanks to everyone that has been involved. I'll pass it back to Michael now who's going to conclude today's session. Thank you. Thank you.
So thanks so much um, to Chris, Mary and Michael for today's session. The feedback has been really, really great uh, throughout the session today, as Anthony was saying. And thanks everyone for sending in your questions. Um, we do appreciate the feedback. Please do keep it coming in and do engage on social media using the hashtag Reboot2020. We really appreciate that. And we share all of your stories as well. Uh, I'd like to remind you that we do have the session on Friday at 10 a.m. and that's going to be looking at banking. So following on from the session yesterday, uh, do look at the workbook. Think about what you could add to the workbook based on today's session. We hope you're using it throughout the series and that it's helping you. Uh, do see the website for the links to the mentoring that was mentioned and there's other information there. We also have all of the resources available on the website within 24 hours. So um, all, everything that you've seen in the presentations and anything that's really been shared on screen will be on that website, on the Griffith website. Uh, we're delighted to provide this series in connection, in association with Chambers Ireland. So thank you to all the businesses that joined us who are members from Chambers Ireland and all of the other small to medium sized businesses that were with us today. So all that's left to say is thank you to everyone again. Thank you for your contributions. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10.30 when we'll be discussing uh, how do I protect my business and the people I work with. And that should be a really engaging session. We look forward to seeing you then. So until then, thank you so much for joining today and we'll see you again tomorrow. Stay safe and well.